a criteria that you can, you know, take their retail price and then deduct, you know, by 10% or, or a percentage. And then that would be the listing price on the, on the buy it now, or if you want to do a buy it now, if you wanted to do it as a, as an event. Um, so there's lots of different ways to skin that. Um, and, and also you can, you can set the amount of aging. So if you only want to show the aged vehicles, which I would recommend showing all the vehicles, I mean, they're in the business of selling cars, but they can sell a car for, for, um, you know, close to retail, um, to a wholesale customer, they shouldn't care. Right. I mean, they just, they just want to move these vehicles. So, um, I think that's, that's a lot of what you can do there is, is start hosting a lot of vehicles, um, but it's all part of strategy that I think Jeremy will address with you. But um, suffice to say, um, we'll go ahead and, and kind of walk through what your marketplace looks like currently and then what it could look like with some feeds. So we'll show you, um, I'll have Chris show you the, um, a couple of other customers that are using um, you know, several feeds for that and what it looks like. And, um, you know, the difference is you're going to, some of those feeds have images that they're, they're retail, right? So they're going to have their, their logo on there and, and that kind of thing. So that's, that's okay. You can also then send out your folks to, um, to run a core on, on selected models to, to give more verbose information, um, remotely. Um, and it will just depend to whatever's in the system. So they don't have to take all the walk arounds. So they can just do a damage, a damage CR um, if they wanted to. So it makes it pretty, pretty simple um, and very valuable for your, your dealers and a strategic way to, to battle, you know, the backlot cars and the ACVs and the stuff that's kind of stealing some of the, the business. So um, what is it that, uh, what, what has been the talking points within the auction um, with Kyle and, and Mike and, and the rest? Are they are they looking to 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 get a solution, or are, are you just being proactive? No, so uh, we've discussed it. Um, you know, especially with it being so hard to get cars. Um, you know, to get their dealer information their, on their cars on their lot, and that way we could add them to the sale. But we were planning on adding it to our Wednesday sale as a vehicle that we could sell. Um, sure. So yeah, but. Um, and then we could probably set up some, um, you know, automated stuff with their inventory also. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Paul, real quick, Jeff, yeah. I did, I came to, um, IAS, um, from the dealer side and the, the Columbus fair auto auction was like two miles from where I worked and I got to know them real well and they had very deep ties to IAS. And so when COVID hit, they did just that for us. We literally set up a feed, sent them uh, stock inventory photos off of our, our, our website or our inventory tool. And we ran 400 cars in lane two and 400 cars in lane three um, every Wednesday for the entire time that the city of Columbus was shut down. And that, that, so we have really good experience as to how to do it and then what, what does and doesn't necessarily work. Um, I found a lot of success by, by, leaving my inventory as soon as the sale ended, just leaving it up on CFAA's website for the rest of the week. You know, they might take it down the night before the sale, put it back up uh, after the sale was over. Um, and then I hand sold through the auction, uh, you know, a, a decent amount of cars every single week as a result of it. So that might be one way that you can kind of go to your dealers and talk to them. I um, mean, I'll be glad to help you with, you know, giving you some, some endorsements or some, sitting on some calls with you to let them know kind of what I did from the dealer's point. Um, we did it for a while before COVID, just not with that much retail frontline cars. Right. So um, we were, we were stocking a bunch to try to sell a bunch, but when COVID hit, nobody was coming in the doors. We thought, okay, let's open it all up. Well, well when everything opened back up in Columbus and like May and June, we didn't change the strategy. And in fact, we kind of doubled down and started doing even more of it. So I think you're onto something pretty big. And the cool thing is we know, we know some of the roadblocks that are going to be in your way and, and how to try to help you through it. Okay, cool. 
So Chris, why don't we um, go ahead and, and share your screen and we'll just walk through, um, you know, kind of their, you know, kind of their look and what we have and then what we do with, with other, other marketplaces that are branded. Sure and Jeff, you, under, you understand the, the difference between um, the, the fact that it's not just the, the web portion, but it's also a full, um, you know, your Android and, and Apple account, right? That that's all set up? Uh, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, our, uh, okay. our apps. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So, Jeff, I've got my browser here. So this is the web version. Here's the mobile. Uh, it's my phone there. And I'll show you a couple of uh, a couple of marketplaces with a couple of different examples that I think are relevant. Um, one of the things I'll show that Jeremy just spoke to is like, for instance, your marketplace right now is completely empty. Um, and you know, there's a couple things that could be done. You know, different strategies. I mean, one of them obviously is to get some outside the gate dealer feeds in here, and then you can, then you'll have dealer inventory in here. Um, and then one of the one of the other ones that Jeremy was talking about was keeping your no sales up and listed. Um, you know, this is Indianapolis car exchange. They ran this morning. Uh, they've got a few lingering cars that probably just didn't run. Um, but you'll notice at the bottom of the marketplace, we have a big uh, no sales vehicle section. And so you can view all these no sales uh, in the marketplace. Um, you can go to view all and take a look and they've enabled uh, the offer functionality. So, you know, while these, you know, you can't put a bid or do a buy now, you can at least go ahead and uh, take a look at these and see what was missed. You know, maybe I'll make an offer on this Jeep and um, use that to get a little bit more engagement. Um, it also means that when you go to the search section, uh, buyers can go ahead and view, you know, all the no sales along with uh, what's available. So, uh, kind of keep some stuff listed in the marketplace um, until you start uh, running the next event. Uh, the other thing you could do is, and let's, let's see if uh, this other marketplace has a good example of that. Um, you know, trying to turn inventory uh, basically the next, starting the next day. Um, this auction had their sale yesterday. They, they do Tuesday and Thursday. And if you'll notice, they've already started numbering cars, they've already started turning cars for next Tuesday's sale. So that way people can kind of see it ahead of time, go in here and put in proxy bids uh, starting now. Um, and also lets them, you know, gives them more time to look at the inventory uh, ahead of the sale. Um, so that's a couple of things we can look at, you know, what, what your events are configured, uh, you know, to start showing when they start showing, um, enabling no sales, that kind of stuff. And then when it comes to dealer feeds, we have this Autobahn marketplace. Uh, that's an example of the uh, dealer feeds. So we have this group who has all these different dealerships. Um, and this is the way we kind of recommend it, uh, setting it up. You can have your you know, Oklahoma Auto Exchange that's syncing your in-lane events uh, and have your you know whatever lane event uh, in this list here, but then you can also set up each one of these dealerships kind of as their own marketplace within your marketplace. And then they can have, you know, a single event with all of their inventory, or if you want to have a pre-aged and aged events that are separate, we can set that up as well. Uh, but all of these are all coming through with just different dealer data feeds. And if you can go in here and take a look at, you know, some of the examples, um, you know, they look, uh, I guess this is no longer available. Um, they look, you know, fairly detailed uh, from some of the feeds. It just depends on the, who the feed provider is. Um, let me take a look at, let's see, like Fresno Lexus. That's some nice stuff. The, uh, Needs. The other thing we can look at is what values are coming in on their feed so that you can um, set either buy it now prices, reserve prices, starting bids. Um, you get options, you know, from the feeds, you get nice photos uh, from that, from that as well. And then like Paul said, you could actually go on site with core 
uh, and send some people to do like condition reports on, you know, either aged units, trades, whatever. Um, and then you can get a full condition report uh, that looks like this. Log in here. Let's see if this focus has one. Yeah. So this is when you have a core CR done, you get this full condition report. And then on mobile, you can view it as well, full screen, and you can kick it out to a new tab if you want. But you can see the whole thing. Um, and it's got all the CR damage line items. If you've got auto grade enabled, it would have the auto grade. Um, you can tap and view you know, the CR photos even on the mobile. Take a look. Um, and as far as the dealer feeds go, it's pretty straightforward to set up. Um, most of the work really is just you reaching out to the dealer themselves and having them contact their feed provider. Um, and then how familiar are you with the auto remarketers uh, administration uh, page, Jeff? Are you logged in? Uh, yeah, we're, here we're in that all the time. Okay, cool. So what we would do is we'd help you set up the uh, the different accounts. So like, for instance, we have BMW Riverside is one of the uh, dealers in this group here. Um, right, here there, right here. And uh, so we would help you create that account. And then under the administration side, when you set up the dealership itself, you go ahead and put in the integration account. So this one's using Netlook and this is the account name and the file that we receive. Um, and then we can also set up, like I said, different rules for aging. Um, so here's like the, the aged inventory event for this account. And what we do is we just set that this is an aged event. And then we have a setting that says how many days their age uh, is set to. So if you want, if you if any of your customers are like, look, I don't want to list, you know, my, my fresh stuff, uh, but maybe after 30 days, you know, you could set that up and then it'll go ahead and show up um, or, you know, you can list everything, uh, but it's just a feature that we, that we offer. Um, so once we set up the feed and we start receiving the file and you've done that all, all that configuration and we can help you help you with that as well. Um, then the inventory will just start loading. And if you notice here, there's 108 units. Uh, and then on the marketplace, you see the, the 108 units in here. And there you go. You know, and then as far as engagement or pricing and, and functionality for the selling rep, um, you know, they can go to let's switch over to this auction. They can go to your app or uh, on mobile and they can actually see everything they have listed and they can update pricing from here, both in the web and in mobile. So they can set the starting bid, set the reserve price by now price. So maybe if we're not receiving those, that pricing and the feed, uh, you know, they can enter it here or they could update it if they need to change it or if they want to drop, you know, whatever, uh, amount was in the, what was in the feed, uh, from before. And of course you could show them, you know, you can come here for seeing everything you sold, both from the feeds as well as, you know, in the lane. Um, you can see arbitration, titles, if sales, offers, all that kind of stuff from here. Have you seen the full marketplace? Have you, you took a tour of it, I'm assuming? Uh, I mean, we use it, um, so I, I guess so. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. If you have any questions, I mean, if there's anything I can kind of go over or highlight. So you get mm -hmm. the dealer feeds, right? You get their inventory. It goes into marketplace. How does that load into auction master on sale day? So if we got a, so this... if we got their inventory in marketplace and then Wednesday we've got a sale, um, can you pick and choose the inventory that you want to put in the sale? Do you set up a, 
So what the way we set up the feeds um, and the way we set up Auction Master, we kind of silo it. We keep it separate. So for instance, uh, let me just give you an example. My internet is slow today. Yeah. All right. So take a look at this example here. So this is the Autobahn marketplace. Uh, this is the actual marketplace here that contains the, the overall marketplace. If you notice, all of these are separate marketplaces. Um, and essentially what we do is we have one that's set for kind of the main container of the whole thing. And then we have one that's set up for whichever has auction master because auction master needs to sync with it for events, inventory, all that kind of stuff. And then what we do is we set up the dealer feeds to come into their own separate ones. And so that way it doesn't interfere with anything that you're running in the lane or what you have on site. Um, what we do is if it sells, we send you an email notification and we also have a module that we haven't really released it, released it formally yet, but I'll give you a quick sneak peek of it because, uh, I'm trying to wrap up testing and then we'll do rollout of it. Um, but essentially what it is, is a marketplace transaction man management module. So it's purely for the purposes of setting up, uh, marketplace transactions and to make it kind of automatic and easy to, to, to work those sales. Um, but, you know, in the meantime, until this is out and we start enabling it and using it, um, you, know, you essentially get an email notification of which car sold, and then you could just manually book it into auction master and create the sale, just like you would do with like, you know, selling something on OVE or, smart auction or other platforms. Um, give me one second, I guess it's hadn't updated. So the way we do it is we, with this integration that I'm, I'm gonna show, we have a service that runs on your server and anything that sells in any of your other child marketplaces, any of the dealer feed marketplaces, um, essentially a file would land on your server uh, and then that transaction would get imported into Auction Master for you. Um, and then you can choose to have it automatically process and create a sale or, or kind of require approval. Um, and you could set that up whichever way you want, uh, whatever you prefer. That's going to take a minute. Hang on. Move this over here and then I'll switch to that in a minute. Um, so when you, you know, see your marketplace, uh, here, what you essentially see on a marketplace is, is, you know, your main Oklahoma auto exchange, and this is, would be what auction master is syncing with. And then you would have all, all the other different dealerships, uh, based on, you know, which ones you, uh, sign up. Okay. So, uh, now. normally every week we have, uh, four lanes in marketplace, right? Um, a, B, C, and D has their cars in them. So their inventory mm -hmm. would not show up in there. So if if they sent you units and you checked them in to Auction Master, they would show up in this one. If they came in from the data feed and they're the ones that are still at the dealership, they would show up in their own uh, account, essentially here. So if uh, we wanted to add those into the sale... Okay, so mm -hmm. Uteberg has whatever fifty cars that they want to run during the sale. Um, how do we go about doing? Well, let me, from let me, an operation flow, real quick. it would probably let me, let me qualify be qualify real quick there, Jeff. So what you're what you're asking for is um, Peterberg has um, ten cars that he sent you, and he's got twenty cars that are sitting on his lot. For a total of 30 cars and what you're asking for is when Peter Burke's, um starts his cars you're going to run 
10 of them through the lane via simulcast. And then when the next 20 hit, you're still gonna run via simulcast, but they're not gonna be in the lane running through, but you're gonna have the auctioneer auctioning off a virtual car that's being, that the pictures are rotating through. Is that what you're asking to do? So, so you're, you're trying to put outside of the lane vehicles in the lane to be sold um, simultaneously to the ones that are actually on. That's front. correct. That's, that's, that's correct. what we were um, planning on okay. doing. Okay. And was that all you're planning on doing with these cars or are you also wanting to use those cars for, um, for sale 24 seven outside of the lane? You know, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't try to help them out and, and have a place for people to, uh, to look at all of them. You know what I mean? The source vehicles. Source yeah. vehicles. Yeah. Okay. So I don't think we've ever done that scenario, but it's very compelling. Um, Chris, what would be the procedure to do something like that? I don't know. <laughs> thought you thought you had it. Uh, I mean, essentially, um, these of these this inventory, these events are online events. Uh, at least that's how we typically load them. That's not to say you can't do a simulcast. Um, there would be a little bit of finagling with your admin console, because as you know, the admin console, you know, if you go to the config for it, uh, you know, it's tied to your, the one that your auction master is running. I won't pull that up right now. Um, but it, you could also set it up where you can have one that launches for a different account. Um, and when it comes to organizing and managing the inventory for these feeds. Um, you can manage the inventory fairly well in the auto marketers page in the site. Um, if you had like a different event that you wanted to move all these, this inventory to, you can select from it all and move it and select what uh, like event you want to move it to. Um, so you could create a simulcast event and then how would they then? How would they then put that into lane numbers, though? In other words, I I know how we could do it as a separate simulcast event, and they could do it running at the end of the event or at the beginning of the event, but running it in the middle of the event I can't really run it in the middle. I mean, AWG simulcast like uh, you'd have to switch events unless it's all in, so under the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Would you, would, we would, would have you be able to would you be able to transfer like for instance he's just saying let's just say it's one bmw riverside right um and they wanted to add lane numbers to those vehicles would you have to transfer those vehicles into huh just trying to figure out how to how it would assign the lane number that would then correspond. I don't need an answer right now. If you guys, you guys probably obviously did not know what we were wanting. Um, yeah. So if you guys, yeah, first I've heard of that part. if you guys want to generally... talk about it and, <laughs> and think about it and then let us know, but, but essentially <clears throat> there's no way to get the dealer feeds into auction master, right? And generally, it was designed that way because when the cars, so say they had the dealer feed and the cars were showing on the marketplace, y'all aren't technically looking at the cars. So auction itself doesn't have any type of liability on the vehicle. So when the cars do come to run through a lane, it was designed that you have to check it in. So you're putting the eyes on it. And now the liability is really shifting on you guys because it's part of your run list now. So designed that in order to, when the cars come from the dealership, you're checking it, your registration people looking at that car, they're verifying the mileage, you know, all of that stuff. So it has to go through the check in process. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, basically, on the dealer feeds, we need to just uh, use that as a separate sale, a separate simulcast. 
of uh, yeah. vehicles that are not at the auction, but we can still run them for them. Like if we wanted to do our Wednesday sale yep. till noon, one o'clock, and then start this sale after that with a dealer right. inventory, we could do that. Yep. Yep. We have other types of events as well. So if you know, simulcast is the one that you guys are most familiar with. It's what you, you you're doing every day. Um, but you know, with the, when it come, when it comes to dealer feeds and that inventory, uh, you know, they may not want you know for you to run it one day a week kind of thing. They they want you to leave it up, you know, and make it available, you know, for buy now or for offer. Um, the other thing that we can do is also uh, timed auctions uh, that don't require an auctioneer or a clerk. It's just an online uh, kind of ACV style where you basically have, you know, if you have 50, 50 units, you could have three run at the same time for 20 minutes, you know, with 10 minutes in between, and then, you know, go to the next one, the next one, and people can put in their bids. And, you know, as long as the bid meets reserve, it'll sell. Uh, if not, you can turn it and run it into an, you know, another event tomorrow. So you could have like, you know, daily events for two hours. Uh, so, you know, there's lots of different options for the different types of events um, besides just simulcast. I don't think if we have anybody using the automated at the moment. Um, I don't think we do, but we do have the functionality. Um, all you have to do is configure the, the event. Um, okay, so can you show me um, one of the events uh, with dealer feeds? Is that what I'm looking at right now? That's what all this inventory is. These thousand units are all uh, coming in from these different dealerships, and essentially all their aged inventory is is presented here. So you see all these different all these vehicles for these different customers. Um, and, you know, and some of them we have pricing for buy it now. Uh, some of them have bidding enabled. Some of them have just offer enabled. Um, just depends on the setting for the different uh, customer. Yeah, it's not that it precludes you from having the sale. Um, it's just that it precludes you from having the each dealer run in order and continue to run outside of the lane and back to another dealer inside of the lane and then back that same dealer outside of the lane, that kind of thing. So it may be better because it, it kind of would offer up some confusion there um, uh, if you did it that way. So this might, I think, may be a better way to go. You're, you're, you're utilizing the audience that you have to stay around for that outside of lane sale um, as opposed to doing it another day. Or, or you could do it another day. You could add, you could, you could have a, a, a Friday sale of outside of the lane or a Monday and a Friday sale with your Wednesday inside of the lane sale, right? So um, some flexibility there. So how can we help you uh, start getting these uh, dealers feeds? All right, Jeremy, anything you want to add? No, I, I'm good. Jeff, you, just when you send those forms in or if you need help with, with that process, just co just copy me on uh, the email and I'll I'll help on our end. Absolutely. You betcha. Yeah, and, and sometimes, Jeff, um, these these used car dealers, because they change hands so many times, they may not even know who their feed, are, feed is or they don't. They don't have the, the username and the password um, readily available because it was two general managers uh -huh. ago. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they have no yeah. idea. Um, so if you need any help with that, really um, the best thing to do is to get them to send a uh, approval email. So you send them an email saying, do you approve for, um, for uh, Oklahoma Auction Exchange and IAS to be a recipient of the dealer feed from whoever the dealer is, right? Or whoever their feed provider okay. is. And, um, and um, then they would answer back yes. If they have the, the contact at that, at that uh, dealer, if they could CC him on that, that um, response so that when, when, um, when we contact, 
we, we get the information because it's already been approved, right? So instead of doing it backwards where we try to get it, then we have to get approval and then. I got you. 